Welcome back to this special edition of Morning Live from the Canadian Warplane Heritage Ma Museum as we thank all uh, members of the Canadian Forces, uh, past and present, for uh, service, including Fred Smith, back with us uh, this year. Fred Smith is a great example of the great sacrifice so many Canadians have made. Fred, this is going back generations. Thirteen family members served? Yes, we had uh, two uncles get killed in the Second World War, five uncles served in the Second World War, and uh, my brothers and sisters and relatives, brothers, uh, one injured, and I was the injured one. Right, and of course you uh, served in the Golan Heights, you saw some horrific things, and it was actually, as so often is the case, uh, diagnosed with uh, PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder, but that came years after, um, and again, which is quite common, but tell us your story. Uh, what quite happened was I joined a, joined a pretty proud soldier. Uh, I come from a military family, that's what we did. And I got into the Royal Canadian Regiment and I was a soldier. And then I had an opportunity to take a posting to Syria, Israel, the Golan Heights. When I got there after five and a half months, I ended up, uh, because of trauma, I saw a lot of bad stuff. They had to get me out. They gave me my medical file and they sent me out of, uh, out of the Golan Heights on the first aircraft possible, promising me they would give me help. Back in 1981, they didn't give any help. There wasn't any help, and, but I had a medical file. So I was posted into a place where, where I could work and, and basically that was on the way out. No more promotions, no more anything. After that, I got angry. I was angry and very sick and broken and I walked away from the military an angry man. 26 years later, I, I lived on the streets for 26 years, 20, uh, using drugs, uh, alcohol, whatever, whatever it could do. And at 26 years, my son hung himself. That's where I walked into a hospital and asked for help. When I got into the hospital, I realized uh, that I did have mental health issues and there was help for me. And since that time, I have uh, sought out to Veterans Affairs, the Royal Canadian Legion, and what I've done is, uh, is got some help and financial. Now what I do is I work the streets with the homeless, with the vets, looking for those guys that do, were just like me that uh, uh, I can give them programs. I can give them an opportunity off the street, and that's what I do. I look for vets, and I do that to live because I got to give back for what I've got. Now, since we spoke last year, we've had some tragic examples. Once again, we're uh, serving members falling through the cracks, and we've had some tragic suicides. Where are we at since 1981 with your experience in terms of flagging it and dealing with it? We are a long, long way ahead, and I'm not one of those persons that will uh, say the cup is uh, half empty. I'd rather look at it as half full, so I'm not going to knock it down any. The Canadian Armed Forces is actually reaching out to their, their soldiers. I've met many in, from Gagetown to Edmonton this year, from a golf uh, uh, workshop to the Army run in Ottawa, and I've had the opportunity to speak to a lot of soldiers, families, and, and veterans, and I'm finding that they're coming forward now a lot more than they ever did. And the real truth is, is we got to keep coming forward because it doesn't necessarily mean you're not going to be retained in the Army. It means that if you've got PTSD and you're into the drugs or the alcohol and you think you feel hopeless, you're suicidal, you got to reach out because you will die. There's no way around this. This disease will kill you. So reach out. Well, there's some uh, go-to websites uh, that we'll link up at chch.com, including Veterans Helping Veterans and Operation Leave the Streets Behind, Homeless Veterans Assistance, which you've been extremely proactive with. And we appreciate you uh, s uh, sharing your memories. And we should just have a quick look, at, again, acknowledging your family, because so many generations of, uh, of your family served in so many conflicts. Okay, I will do that. Uh, this is my entire, entire family, uh, just pictures of my brothers and my uncles there. And I want to go over here because these, this is my uncle Harley. I, I named my, motor, my Harley Mate Davidson motorcycle after him. He was killed in France, and there's a really good story. We just found out about this this year. He made a deal with his buddy before he went into the war, the Second World War, in France, and said, if anything happens to me, will you look after my wife? And the guy said, yes. Me, then he got a uh, sniper killed him. And 
his wife married the guy that said he would look after his wife, and they had three more children. I got to meet my first cousin for the first time this year. Amazing. It was totally amazing. Wow. Well, there's the whole family assembled here. I wish we had more time because you have so many stories, but you're doing such great work, too. Fred, thank you for your service, for your family service, and for sharing with us again for this special edition of Morning Live from the Canadian Warplane Heritage Museum. We're going to take a fast break. We're back with lots more. Thank you.